So don't tell me you ain't got it or you can't do something Yeah, everybody's spitting but they ain't saying nothing I'm just trying to make a difference, give you something to think about I ain't worried about a status or some goddamn clout If you see me in the streets, don't be afraid to shout them But I'm out Yo, 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 yo What's up? What's good with all my bull lifers out there? Y'all already know I'm ecstatic. I'm ecstatic, man, because yesterday was crazy. That game was everything that I wished it would have been. So let's hop straight into this, all right? But all right, the first thing that I want to discuss, of course, is the team. I want to discuss how the team looked as a whole. Now, coming out early in the first quarter of this game, the Bulls, like, Early on, they came out and they were strong. They came out and looked strong. I felt like the the insertion of Bobby Portis into the starting lineup, Bobby Portis and the Rook Wendell Carter Jr., it definitely ignited this team. It gave us full-fledged energy, which is exactly what we needed, energy and quickness. Because with Rolo in the lineup, as well as Jabari Parker, we didn't have that, like, nowhere near. Like, we looked like a totally different team yesterday with Bobby Portis and Wendell Carter Jr. in the lineup, right? So the, the first play of the game, or well, the first bucket of the game was, was flawless by Bobby Portis. He got a steal, ran out on a break. He had Zach Levine with him, which he could have dished it to him for, for, for help or whatnot, but he took it upon himself and said that he didn't need it, and he went up for a dunk. Like, <laughs> that was crazy, and I felt like it was just an upward spiral from there. You know what I'm saying? The Bulls just continue to feed off of that energy that I felt like Bobby Portis put into this team that he put on the floor out there and 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 they never looked back. Now, Zach Levine, he continued to do his thing as well because Zach Levine and Bobby Portis in that starting lineup, I felt like they had really, really good chemistry. They fed off of each other. They were basically sharing the baskets. And, it, it, and it's really, really, uh, it was a surprise to me because last year when Bobby Portis would get, I think when he got his chance to be in the starting lineup last year, he didn't look that well. Bobby Portis failed to take advantage of opportunity when he got it last year to be a starter. I remember when Fred Hoiberg tried him, I think four or five games in the starting lineup, Bobby Portis didn't produce. But this year, this time around, in this early preseason, Bobby Portis has come out and, and he took full-fledged advantage of it. Actually, in, in the all of the four preseason games that they played up until this point, Bobby Portis has been the MVP, if you ask me. Like, he looks like an all-star out there almost, and this is the guy that's supposed to be our sixth man. But he is leading the helm for the Chicago Bulls team. And like I said, I felt like he was the full reason why the Bulls got off to this very, very fast start. So by the time the second quarter had come around, I noticed that the, the Bulls had their reserves out there. Well, not their reserves, but the bench players were out there. Campaign, uh, Jabari Parker, he actually came off of the bench yesterday. Uh, Robin Lopez, you know, uh, and I believe it was Hutch as well. But at, when, when they had them come out there, now we had a very, very, very great first quarter. The Bulls dominated that first quarter, but early on when the bench unit was out there in the second quarter, they came out super flat. Robin Lopez committed a super early foul, sent, sent Sabonis to the line for two, and I believe uh, Sabonis before that even got a, a layup on Robin Lopez as well. So Robin, like, he just slows this team down, man, and I hate to even, like, Robin Lopez was my guy, you know what I'm saying? I really liked Robin Lopez and what he did for us last season. And my man Swaggy Bryce, we did the uh, pod yesterday and I felt like he really made a good point for Robin Lopez stating that he set out nearly half the season last year. And I mean, that that's true, that's very true. And he, he probably doesn't have his basketball legs up under him right now, but four games in and he just looks horrible. You know what I'm saying? So I guess I, I'll give him, till about 20 games in. 20 games in, if he still doesn't have his win under him, then, I mean, the caveman is just dead. 
He's just dead as a basketball player, if you ask me, because it's not like he's coming off of an injury or anything like that. He just has to get in basketball shape, I guess is what Swaggy was saying. And I get that. Very, very true. But he, for now, Robin Lopez does not look fitting for this squad, obviously. So the second quarter, they came out super flat. They uh, let the Pacers go on an 8-0 run, and it just looked horrible. And Freya had to call a timeout, but for good reason, because once he did, the Bulls got it back rolling. The Bulls got it back rolling, and, and, and they stopped the bleeding because Jabari, he came out. He did a little bit of his thing, you know what I'm saying? He continued on with his mid-range jumper, which looked pretty crisp in the first half. He also popped the three that I saw, which was pretty nice as well. Antonio Blakeney, he was out there. He, he was out there doing his thing as well, you know, scoring like he should. So after, after that timeout, the team got back into it. Uh, I believe a few of the other starters had got back in the game when Bobby Porter, Zach Levine got back in the game. They basically just widened that gap a little bit more. So uh, second quarter was an awesome quarter as well. Like we pretty much just dominated the entire first half. Now you fast forward to the second half of the game, third quarter, the Bulls continued to dominate. Like it, it really was, It really, the Pacers almost looked like they were no match for the Bulls yesterday, like they 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 contained Victor Oladipo like he was some average player out there. I don't even I don't remember what Victor Oladipo had. Let me check real quick. Victor Oladipo had he played 29 minutes, had four rebounds, four assists, and 12 points. Now that actually isn't a horrible stat line, but for Victor Oladipo it is, especially. Uh, for his field goal percentage. I'm pretty sure his field goal percentage was poor. I don't have it right here, but I saw him take a lot of shots and he missed a lot of them as well. So the Bulls played very, very stellar defense on him. Chris Dunn was locking him down. I even saw Zach Levine on his heels. Zach Levine, man, he, he looks like a totally different player right now on both ends of the ball because I mean, he, he, he's working on defense. Nobody can deny that Zach is working on defense. So, uh, yeah, it, like I said, it was much of the same in the third quarter. Uh, Bobby Portis continued to do his thing as well. I'm really loving what I'm seeing from Bobby Portis, man, because he is... I don't know. He's lights out right now. I don't know if he's just motivated because of this contract or whatever the case may be, but if... if Vic, if a player like Victor Oladipo can improve as much as he did coming from uh, Orlando and OKC and when he finally got over to Indiana and he just exploded, he had that crazy year, I'm not going to put it out of the rim for Bobby Portis. I'm really hoping that this isn't just a fluke and he's having like one of those uh, Nico spurts, you know how Nico would turn into like this awesome player in March, how he, how he was those few years or those couple years back when he was playing with us, like how he would just turn into like a superb player in March. They called him March Nico. I, I, I'm really hoping that that isn't the case for Bobby Portis. And uh, I was on Twitter yesterday as well, and I was talking to uh, my guy from Bulls Scripted, and I saw him uh, make a tweet saying how the Bulls will probably end up trading Bobby Portis basically because they won't want to pay him. And having Jabari Parker take over his role as the backup power four for this team, the six man. And I totally like was super, super against that, which he wasn't for it either. But like, I, I just had to voice my opinion as to like, that would be very, very foolish on the Bulls part if they did do something like that. Just because I understand that they only have a few more weeks, days, or whatever the case may be before the deadline to extend Bobby Portis on for from that rookie deal. So I get that. And once that deadline is over, then basically is 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 you know anybody can throw some money at, at Bobby Portis. You know, and the Bulls will have to match it. And the way that he's looking right now, obviously Bobby Portis could garner something like crazy. Like something like 15 to 18 million a year or something like that and I understand that but the way that Bobby Portis is looking right now in comparison to say a Jabari Parker who would you guys rather keep
You know what I'm saying? Like, if we would pay Jabari Parker the $20 million next year anyway, I would rather chop that up a little bit and pay it to Bobby Portis. You know what I'm saying? Let Jabari Parker walk. Robin Lopez will be off of the books. You will have uh, a Sheik falling off of the books as well. He had $11 million. Like, you know what I'm saying? We only have one big contract left in, and that would be Zach Levine's $78 million. <laughs> but all right, I kind of like fell off the rails, man. I'm sorry. I, I just really uh, started rambling. But yeah, no, like all in all, as a team, the Bulls killed it, man. So let me move on to the individual players. Zach Levine. Zach Levine came out, had a very, very stellar game. Like he, he just, I'm loving the way he looked. I don't even know what to say anymore. Zach Levine had 22 points, three assists, and four rebounds. You know what I'm saying? So, what 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 can you say about Zach Levine? Plus, as I said earlier, his his defense is looking crazy. He's like stepping it up on that end of the floor as well. And I even like his vision. Like I'm 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 really liking a lot of the players on the Bulls' vision. I saw Bobby Portis throw a nice pass yesterday as well. So, this team is really really looking good. But as I said, Zach Levine, man, hopefully he can sustain this. I'm praying that. He continues to, he continues on with his good health because he, he he's looking very, very good out there. Like health-wise, I'm eating. Like not even just basketball, but health-wise. Like I don't see him lagging or anything like that. He looks 100% and that's what I'm loving out of Zach Levine right now. And he's controlling his pace. Like he looks, man, he looks like a gazelle out there. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he is extremely fast. Like. I don't know. All-star. All-star Zach Levine. That, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, next, I want to get into Bobby Portis. Bobby Portis, man, he's looking like the MVP of this team. As I said, he looks like the MVP of this team right now. Obviously, uh, putting him in this starting lineup is what gave us the energy that we needed to push past the Indiana Pacers, who are no slouch. You know what I'm saying? The Indiana Pacers are a pretty good basketball team, and the Bulls made them look like the opposite last night. The Bulls came out and they murdered them, and I really give, I really attribute that to Bobby Portis being in that starting lineup, and obviously Wendy Carter Jr., but uh, uh, Bobby Portis more so, if you ask me. Um, anytime the Pacers would, you know, uh, go on a little run, the Bulls would have the lead. But the Pacers would go on a little run, and Bobby Portis would stop it. Like, out of nowhere, he would come out of nowhere with a three-point shot or, or a dunk that would invigorate the crowd. Like, he, he would just suck the air out of the Indiana Pacers. Anything that they thought that they was doing, Bobby Portis would just come out of nowhere and stop it. You know what I'm saying? So, Bobby is looking awesome, man. Like, he put up 20 points, had two assists and six rebounds, but he only played 22 minutes. He only played 22 minutes in a 48-minute game, and he had this type of production. You know what I'm saying? So think if this was a regular season game, he probably would have, and if he was playing like this, he probably would have played something like 32, 34 minutes. So he would have had even more time to, to produce on the floor. Bobby Portis, hands down, MVP of this team right now. Next, I want to talk about Chris Dunn. I thought that he had a really, really good game yesterday as well. I felt like he was all over the floor. He contributed in all areas from scoring to assists, rebounding, defense. Chris Dunn looks like that Swiss Army knife that everybody talks about, that do-it-all type of player. He popped the three at the top of the key early in the game. I saw him get some key steals. He was out there rebounding. Like I said, he was just doing his thing, man. Like, I mean, Chris Dunn definitely is, he's looking really, really nice right now. And I, what I wanna see out of Chris Dunn is just consistency. I really want him to find his niche find his, 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 his one role on his team as the leader, of course, but more so as that type of player that is focused mainly on defense, but he's gonna take his shot when he has the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? But I think his main niche should be getting everybody else involved and, and being that anchor on, a, on the defensive end. 
I think that that's Chris Dunn's job for this team. And obviously, being that vocal leader in the locker room, that's what we really need from him. So I feel like if Chris Dunn can continue to do that, then he will be one of the more prominent point guards in the Eastern Conference, especially for this team. I feel like he's very, 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 very valuable to this team already. So, like I said, I love what I saw out of Chris Dunn yesterday. His stat line wasn't crazy, but he had... Nine points, seven assists, and three rebounds, but that doesn't tell the whole story because this kid was all over the floor yesterday, so I really liked what I saw out of him. Next, got to talk about Justin Holiday. <laughs> Justin Holiday, he balled out, man. Uh, he, he looked like he couldn't miss from three. But see, with Justin Holiday, he will have these types of games, right? Like, Justin Holiday will have those games where he'll like shoot like five for seven from the three-point line and like drop like 22 points or something like that and just go crazy but then next game he'll whatever he'll shoot like three for 14 or something crazy like that you know what i'm saying like and that's one of the things that i don't like about justin holiday is he's one of those hot and cold players a streaky player but I mean, I don't know. It is what it is. I, I, he he really played great yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So I can't bag on him. I'm not I'm not trying to bag on Justin Holiday. But I'm just saying I've seen this movie before. So you know what I'm saying? But all in all, I feel like he contributed like he contributed just as much as anybody did yesterday. Like he was hitting threes when he was supposed to. He kept us. He kept that, that gap wide, you know what I'm saying? Anytime the Pacers thought that they was doing something, he was another one who would like just kill their momentum. Next, we can get into bro Wendell Carter Jr. Now, obviously, he was another one with his insertion into the starting lineup. He's the reason why I feel like the Bulls came out and they were as quick as they were on defense because our defense, like, it, it was just night and day in comparison to the last game. You know, like the Bulls played like they were like one of the best defensive teams in the league, how well they locked down uh, uh, the Pacers guards and as well as their, their front court. Nobody on the Pacers got off yesterday, nobody. And I, I think that that's, that was all attributed to, I, I attribute that to the starting lineup, the, the 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 changing in the starting lineup. You know what I'm saying? Now, I guess we also have to give some credit to Coach Freya Hoiberg. I don't guess we do. We have to give some credit to Hoiberg because that was a that was a gutsy call. I mean, not like it was a hard one because obviously Jabari Parker he wasn't playing well, and we all know how Robin Lopez fared what he was doing when he was in there. So it wasn't a hard call to make, but I'm glad that he made it anyway. But with Wendell Carter Jr., man, I really felt like he did his thing out there. His stat line wasn't crazy. I mean, with the kid, with the rook, he contributes in all areas. And I feel like he's one of those players that just has intangibles. You know, like a lot of the stuff that Wendell Carter Jr. did last night, it didn't show up on the stat sheet. But I really felt like he and Chris Dunn really held it down on the defensive end and like not to say Bobby and Zach didn't because they definitely had bright spots and then even Justin Holiday like he chipped in as well like as a team as a whole this entire team like everybody looked great or they they had for majority of the game everybody looked really really good on defense but Wendell Carter Jr. he really put his bid in in that paint protection and I, I really liked uh, that chase down block that I saw from him as well I love chase down blocks you know what I'm saying that's straight up energy and effort right there and that's one of the things that I love about Wendell Carter Jr. he's one of those ener energizer bunny type players so man like I said like the dog killed it man like bro killed it uh so with Wendell Carter Jr. man with them having him starting in the lineup alongside Bobby Portis, I mean, what are we gonna do once Lloyd Marketing gets back? Y'all like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> because Wendell Carter Jr. looked really, really good next to Bobby Portis, right? Like it was that that offense defense punch. You know what I'm saying? But and I'm pretty sure Lloyd Marketing is gonna do the same. But what if Bobby Portis continues to play like this? Then what do we do? 
do we can do we still start Wendell Carter Jr.? I would say yes. I would definitely say yes. But if Bobby Portis is continuing to light this team on fire like he's doing, do y'all really think that he should like just be a bench player? If he can continue to do this. Now, maybe this is like lightning in the bottle. Yesterday was just lightning in the bottle and maybe he just, you know, just took advantage of, of the opportunity and, you know, he just killed it. But he and Wendell Carter Jr. look really, really good next to each other. And I, that, But that's really one of the reasons why I was confused as to why Fred Hoiberg had even started Bobby Portis. You know, because, like, do you have intentions on starting him anytime in the regular season? Or are you just, like, doing something just in case something else happens? I don't even want to say anything crazy. But, like, if one of the other players get injured or something like that, like, are you just, like, testing the waters for just in case purposes? Like, because obviously Lori Marketing is going to be the starting power forward on this team. And I think that Wendell Carter Jr., for, for defensive purposes, definitely should be the starting center on this team. And where does that leave Bobby Portis coming off of the bench as a six man? Now, obviously, yes, he says that that's his role and he, he, he wants to thrive in that role. But what if yesterday he had a change of thought? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. These are just questions that I'm asking. And guys, I know that I'm all over the place. But I mean, like the way that they play yesterday just... I don't know. I'm, I'm super hyped about it. I'm super stoked. But the kid, Wendell Carter Jr., clearly needs to be starting because, like I said, he is the, the, the best defensive center that we have. And it's just hands down. He showcased that yesterday, and I loved what I saw out of him. All of the intangibles. I love what I saw out of him in that area. But all right. Anyway, and I know I, I'm going all, all everywhere right now, but man, bear with me. But let's talk about Jabari Parker. As I said, Jabari Parker, he had himself a pretty nice game as well. I wasn't mad at what I saw out of Jabari Parker in the first half. In the first half, I thought that he came out and he was playing with a chip on his shoulder. He, he looked like he was pissed that he had to come off of the bench, right? He came out, his shot was on. Like, I didn't see him miss too many shots in the first half. You know, he, he was shooting that shot with, with confidence. And I actually saw him have a couple good defensive possessions when he was guarding Sabonis. So I really liked what I saw out of him. You know, and I was tweeting like crazy during the game. Y'all could check me out on Twitter at Radical underscore creative. But anyway, I was tweeting like crazy during the game just about what I saw out of Jabari. And I thought that it was because of the benching that motivated him. But once the second half came, I feel like Jabari Parker got flat. He started to miss those mid-range jumpers that he was shooting. And I even saw more defensive lapses. It was one possession where he had just let uh, Thaddeus Young back him down all the way into the hole. And I'm like, okay, maybe Jabari Parker about to like just lead him into a block or something like that. But no, that wasn't the case. Thaddeus Young just turned around and just hook shot it off of the backboard. Jabari Parker looked like he was like a point guard guarding him or something. Like that's how easy it was for Thaddeus Young to back him down into the post. He looked better than he did in previous games, the, the two previous games. But, I mean, it still didn't impress me enough to where I, to where I feel like Jabari Parker should be starting. If Bobby Portis continues to play the way he is and Lloyd Marketing is out, I don't know if Jabari Parker should be starting, man. Like, even over Justin Holiday, And I kind of would like to see Jabari Parker play that three position. But even looking at some of the stuff that he's doing at the four, what would make you think that he would do any better guarding smaller, faster players? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't see it. You know what I'm saying? But eh, I don't know. <laughs> But, all right, anyway, let me talk about AB real quick. I thought that he did his thing out there, too. Um, Antonio Blakeney, he came out there, and he did exactly what he was supposed to do. I feel like he gave us that scoring punch. Like, we didn't necessarily need it, but he just he kept us afloat. You know, when, when he did take his shot, when he did get to the free line, to the free throw line, he converted. So I really liked what I saw out of him, too. He had 10 points and four rebounds. Solid game for Antonio Blakeney. Not a crazy one, but solid. All right, 
Next, uh, Chandler Hutchison, man. Um, and I think he's the last one that I'm gonna talk about. Everybody else didn't like contribute too much, you know, and I don't I don't feel like bagging on everybody, but I wanna get into the rook, Chandler Hutchison. I feel like he had the opportunity to really do a little bit of something. He played 17 minutes yesterday, and I feel like the entire team was just running off of adrenaline of like, you know, being ahead so much, and even just the momentum. I feel like we had a uh, really good momentum. Everybody was like playing their game, knocking down open shots, but with Chandler Hutchison, I don't know, like, he, he still looks like he has the jitters out there a little bit. Uh, but I did see him running around, you know, grabbing offensive boards. He was trying to play some defense and everything like that. But with Chandler Hutch, man, I don't know. I think Kendall Gill might be a little bit right about him, man. He might have to go down to the G League and gain him some confidence and just find his game. You know what I'm saying? I really think that Chandler Hutchinson would thrive as one of those like three and D role players. You know what I'm saying? Like a Robert Covington or something like that. Really master that three ball shot and be a crazy contributor on the de defensive end and just continue to grab boards and all of that type of stuff. Be an energy player on both sides of the ball as well. So I think if Chandler Hutchinson can do that, then I, I'm not. I'm definitely not mad at that 22 pick. I'm not mad now either. You know what I'm saying? I'm not panicking about Chandler Hutchinson. I think that he'll be all right. But um, like Kendall said, I think that he just has to gain some confidence, and I think that it would be a good idea for him to probably go to the G League, just because I don't want you know him to like lose confidence or get his spirit broken by like just not playing the way he wants to in the league right now. You know what I'm saying? It, it might shoot his confidence a little bit even going to the G League, but I think that in the long run, that would be the better option for him. We, we shall see with Hutch, man. I, I'm not giving up on him at all. You know what I'm saying? The kid, he's just a rook. You know what I'm saying? So I, I didn't expect a whole lot out of Chandler Hutchinson myself uh, for his rookie season anyway. But I really think that, like I said, he should go down to the G League, get his feet wet, and that's where he'll gain the confidence to be able to be a real, real NBA player. And that's just my thoughts, man. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, stellar game yesterday. I love what I saw, y'all. You know what I'm saying? But I'm about to get up out of here. I'm shooting this video pretty, pretty late, so it may be uploaded super, super late. But um, I thank y'all for listening. I hope y'all enjoyed listening to it as much as I enjoyed making it. It's your man, Wise Black. Y'all check me out on Twitter and Instagram at Radical underscore Creator. I get back with everybody and you know what I'm saying? I connect with everybody. I talk with everybody and all of that when I'm on there. So holla at your boy, man. But I'm about to get out of here. It's my time. Peace.